let's say you have two servers with different ports and different username. Then how can Ansible handle different machines for applying and running the same runbook? So here, runbook is nothing but we are referring to playbooks in Ansible. We have, we want to run the same kind of playbook, but the machines have different ports and the machines have different users. So how can we handle this? Like we are aware, we can handle this. Uh, usually what happens is all our hosts are mentioned in our host file. But in this case, we cannot use a common configuration. That is, we cannot use a common Ansible configuration to do it. So how do we handle this scenario? You can pause this video and see how you would answer this question. Let me go ahead and try to explain this particular scenario for you now. Before I jump into the solution, which is already there on the screen, I would like to explain a bit here. We know that there is something called as ansible.conf, which will have common configurations, right? This common configuration is where you will also mention the Linux username, which can be always used. So if you have practiced this in AWS, you probably would have mentioned EC2 user, which is the most common username used for almost all the different kinds of EC2 machine. But the question here is they don't have the same username, neither do they have the same port, neither do they have the same user. So the username is not same for these machines. It is not same. The ports are not same. And the um, and these two are the important factors that gets picked from Ansible config. So how do we handle this? I have already shared the solution for you as a format of the host file. When we mention these uh, Linux machine information, in our host file, host file, what we can use is we can add uh, the Ansible port example here, which is uh, different as you can observe here. And we can also do Ansible user here, which is also different in this case. So what happens is when you apply a playbook, it is going to go and fetch the host information, but this time with the host information we are going to get ip which we always get but with that we also get the port and the username hence because you have mentioned these two parameters ansible will use these two parameters to log into these machines and run the playbook this is how you can tackle this particular problem statement very well so how do you answer this question if it is asked in the interview if we encounter such a scenario, then we can add what we call as Ansible port and Ansible user parameters with our IP information in the host file. By doing so, Ansible will also pick this particular information when it applies the runbook on these machines and it will use the respective port and username to log into these machines. This is how you can answer this particular question in the interview. That is it for this video, my friends. Hope you have understood how to tackle these questions if they appear in the interview. See you in the next video and thank you. In Ansible Playbook, we have a section which could fail on certain nodes, but we don't want the playbook to stop or exit because of this. Is it possible to ignore this? Is it possible to ignore this part of the playbook failure or if the playbook fails? What we are expecting here is there is a section in the playbook and if it fails, we should continue. That is what they're expecting. I will straight away give you the answer and then give you the explanation because I believe the answer is very well aware. I mean, many of you have would have used it. We can we can do this by using an argument called as ignore errors, sub arguments. And I have picked an example from an official documentation. Here you can see that we are running a particular command 
and if this particular command fails it will ignore it now let me explain a bit more about this so in a playbook that we write you might have many sections correct so let me take an example let us say this is a playbook that we have we might have multiple sections here and uh, the first section here could be you know update the operating system right so we might have name update this is one part and then we might have next name install let's say we install a package and so on and so forth right uh, and let's say i'll give one more let's say run particular command what they are trying to tell you is this particular installation might fail on certain nodes if it does fail on certain nodes then we don't want to exit so what happens playbook in playbook is it might be executing sequentially and if it sees a failure it is going to stop but we don't want to stop we want to go and execute this run section also we want to run the next part of our code and we will run this uh, run this name section and we are going to continue so essentially we will tend to make sure that we ignore this failures on certain machines and to do that what we can do is pass an argument here called as ignore errors yes which means if this part of playbook if this part of playbook fails here it is just going to continue it is not going to uh, stop your playbook it is not going to uh, exit the playbook or anything like that it is just going to continue this is how you can handle this particular scenario in a, in terms of playbook components very well so how would we answer this question in the interview then to achieve this kind of results we can handle this particular part with ignore underscore errors arguments in ansible by doing so what happens is we are indicating the ansible playbook that if this this particular section fails you can ignore and go to the next section and continue exit executing the playbook further this plays a very important role in certain cases because the ansible playbook might stop in the in middle or in between and we might have to debug and run again which could which would cause some issues in the configurations if applied in the production setup now if you are not aware of this let's say in the exam in the interview sorry in the interview and you feel like oh i don't remember the exact term then also you can answer this in the other way around i am not certain of the term or the argument that can be used but i know that there is an argument that exists something around ignore errors or something like this which can be added as a part of sub argument to my playbook section which will make sure that if there is failures seen as a part of this whole process it is going to ignore it and go to the next section unfortunately i don't remember it on top of my head now but i if i go to the documentation i'm sure i will i am going to find it this is how you can tackle this particular question in the interview i hope you understood the questions and now know how to handle this if they appear in the interview that is it for this video my friends speak to you in the next video thank you how can we handle secrets in ansible let's say we have a playbook which needs to log into on premises server with a login name and password this question revolves around a very key topic in ansible that is secrets usually when we are speaking about ansible we speak about ssh login we either add the ssh keys into the server because of which without the login credentials it can log in but in this given question they are asking you that this is not the case because this server is in on premises and it needs a login name and password which means we have to make sure that this secrets are saved somewhere properly and will be handled also do you remember any such concepts that you have learned in ansible if yes then that is the answer let me go ahead and explain the concept first and then we will see how to present this answer in the interview the concept that we are speaking is ansible vault integration 
the command that can be used is ansible vault i have already mentioned this also in the top and you can read it ansible vault is basically a way in which you can encrypt a secret and decrypt it when you require it this is a very simple way to do so i will share one example let us say this is your ansible workspace where you are running some ansible commands using the ansible vault you can create a secret location in the workspace itself where all the secrets are stored so in the workspace itself the secrets will be stored but don't worry all the secrets will be in the encrypted format the other alternative a lot of companies also do is have external integration i will write it on the right side external integration now in the external integration what they aim to do is they will use ansible here let's say in the workspace and they will try to connect to kms in aws or let us say vault hashicorp vault this is a different vault guys it's hashicorp vault and then they are going to pull the secret from this secret location this is also valid but to keep it simple and to answer this in terms of ansible itself we will consider ansible vault as our problem statement and the solution also so what is ansible vault i have explained you it is a way in which we can encrypt the secret so how we can do it step number one you have see you see a command here first you create a vault.yaml file where you can mention a lot of things required then what you can do is you can this is somewhere you can control the uh, the secrets involved but if you don't want you don't need to run this command also the second command is you create a file that has some secrets here i'm just echoing some data and the third command that is very important is a command called as ansible vault encrypt the file so the result of this will be an encrypted uh, vault secret that contains all the required information for us so given the use case that we have as of now we can follow the same example and encrypt the username and password using ansible vault so how do we answer this question in the interview this is how you can answer it based on the question that you have just asked me and considering it is only purely ansible related question in this case i would go with the command ansible slash vault which is a feature in ansible that lets me to create secrets encrypt it and store it in the workspace and retrieve it when i run the playbooks this probably is the best way to go ahead if we are speaking only of ansible now if we have other integrations like kms or hashicorp vault i would also consider them and integrate my ansible with these services because it is more scalable and a resilient way to do so this is how you can present the answer in the interview